In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Platinum 3776 fountain pen with coarse nib. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Platinum 3776 fountain pen, and for an entry-level gold nib pen, this is probably close to my very top recommendation. If you've been to the Blake's Broadcast website, I have a top five pen section, and in the $100 to $200 range, this pen is in there. And, you know, the more that I think about it and I use these pens, this is probably my top choice in that range if you want your first gold nib fountain pen. And the reason for that is you get a really nice full-sized body here, and you're getting Platinum's best nib, their 14 karat gold 3776 nib. And when you look at the alternatives from Pilot and Sailor, to get the comparable pen, you have to spend an extra $100 or more. And at $200 with Sailor, you're getting a much smaller pen in their 1911 standard. And then with Pilot, you're getting their Custom 74, which is a similar size pen as this, but you get their small number five nib. Now, this 14 karat gold nib here, this is, in my opinion, Platinum's best nib. And it's the same nib that they have on a Nakaya. Now, I currently have, I think, seven 3776s. And what is so great about this range is, you know, you have your $200 pens here. And then you have music nibs. You have, you know, engraved celluloid, regular celluloid. Pearl Walnut, you have Sterling Silver, you have Make, which I don't have in this line. They have Arushi Lacquer ones, they have Ebonite. So it's a very diverse line in terms of materials and finishes. And you get to start at $200 with what I think is really their, their best pen. Now this pen uses the same nib as this $1,000 Nakaya. The decoration is different, but it's the same nib. I can pull the nib out of this pen and stick it in this pen, and it'll just work totally fine. It's awesome. Now, there are 18 karat gold versions of the 3776 nib. It looks a little bit different. You know, it has some more scroll work on it, and if you get one of these older ones, you know, they are definitely softer. But really, a modern Nakaya nib is the same nib that you're getting on this $200 pen. And with Pilot and Sailor, you're not getting their best nib at $200. So, full-size pen, their best nib, I think this is a tremendous deal. Now, Platinum has been making the 3776 since 1978. The original one had, like, ridges on it. I think they called it, like, a, a gathered pattern. Very cool looking, and I think it had maybe extra cap rings here. I'd like to get one of those one day, but this is a very mature product. And, you know, for somebody that wants to have a great ex first experience with a gold nib fountain pen, I think it's hard. It's, this is the best one for that, the best option. Now the other pen to consider or pens would be the Lummi 2000. Now those tend to have a squarish nib and they're piston filler. So maybe not the best choice for beginners. And then there's the Pilot Vanishing Point, which I think is great if you can hold it properly with the clip and you don't mind the heavier weight and the look of it. So anyway, this I think is a really excellent fountain pen, if that's not obvious by now. Now let's walk through the pen. So we have a pretty traditional torpedo shape and it's a nice looking pen. You know, you're not gonna offend anybody with the, the design of this pen. It's pretty straightforward. You know, there's no nothing on the finial and the, the bottom of the pen. It's pretty standard. And then we have the Platinum 3776 clip. We have a single step here on the clip, and it kind of bulges out a little bit at the end here, so, or it tapers a bit into the, the middle there. It's a nice-looking pen. I think when I compare this, again, to the Platinum and Sailor options, or Pilot and Sailor options, I think this is probably the best looking one of them. I do like the ball type clip that Pilot uses, but the proportions of the cap and the shape of the body I think are less attractive overall. And then the Sailor one's not really my favorite. But it's, you know, we're almost splitting hairs in terms of the design of these pens. It's a threaded cap. Now, not all of the 3776s are a threaded cap. Some have a snap cap. 
And I believe the ones that tend to have a snap cap do not have the slip and seal mechanism, which is this sort of plastic sleeve in the cap of the pen. And I think at one point Platinum was saying that you could leave the pen inked for a year in the drawer without using it and it'll just write fine. I haven't tested that. I would not test that. But I think their slip and seal technology does prevent the pen from drying out. So I think this is really useful, especially if you're using a very fine nib fountain pen and it's just going to take forever to get through all of the ink. Or if you're only picking up the pen every couple weeks or something, I, I think it, it does help with that. I'm trying to think of it compared to other pens that I've left for, you know, a few weeks without using. I can't say that it's noticeably better because other pens also seal really well. So it's a nice thing to have. <laughs> I, I have no idea if it's really that useful, but I, I'm sure it's, it's doing something in there. Now, looking at the nib here, 3776, which I believe is the height in meters of Mount Fuji, and then we have a Mount Fuji design on the, the nib, and we have my favorite heart-shaped breather hole here, which looks really great, and we have a P for platinum, 14 karat gold, and then C for coarse, because this is their coarse nib fountain pen, and then below that we have 585 to denote that 14 karat gold. And so this coarse nib is essentially a double broad nib. It has a huge chunk of tipping material, and it is my intention to send this to a nib meister to turn it into a formal italic. So I think if you want a pen for customization, the coarse nib is probably a, a pretty good choice. The side of the pen, or the nib rather, says Japan, because these are all made in-house by Platinum in Japan. And then we have their feed, and their older feed was Ebonite. I mean, this was, long, you know, I, 70s, 80s. I believe they were all ebonite. These are plastic now, but they work really nicely. And if I take the uh, body off there, this is a platinum converter, but it's been hand painted. This won't come with this pen. With this pen, I think a gold converter was provided. I'm not 100% sure. They make a silver one. Maybe a silver one came with it. But anyway, this was just the one, one that I, I grabbed to fill this up, and it, it's a, a painted one. But it does come with a converter, which is what you should be getting for a $200 pen. So that part is good. And out of all of the different big three Japanese pens, this is my favorite converter. It's just a straightforward piston converter, but it has a nice size to it. And it looks really nice. You have this big metal cap piece on the end here. Uh, this is definitely my favorite converter of the three. Now, this is a proprietary cartridge and converter system. And I want to show you a platinum cartridge really quick. Now, the platinum cartridge is interesting because it has this metal ball in it. So when you put the cartridge in the pen, the ball is released and it breaks up any air bubbles inside the cartridge. So this is really nice. And, you know, it's a good sized cartridge. It's definitely bigger than like a sailor cartridge. But one thing I would say is you hear that ball when you turn the pen. So some people might find this kind of annoying. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the way that the ball sounds, but it's not so bad that I'm not using these cartridges. I actually do use these cartridges all the time. I just notice that metal ball moving around in there when I'm using it. One thing I forgot to look at here is the cap ring. And if you looked at all of the different 3776s that I have, <laughs> a lot of them are quite a bit different. I've had this pen for a couple months. I really bought it to send to a Nibmeister, but I believe this is the older style cap ring. And when I say older style, there are many older styles, but I'll show you what the latest one I think looks like in a minute. So looking at the, the cap ring here, it says number 3776. We have a P for the platinum logo, and then it says platinum and made in Japan. Now, when comparing this to the other big three, I would say maybe the, the cap engraving isn't my favorite on the platinum. Now, this I think is the newer one, and this has more chunky, crisp, raised engravings, and I think this looks a lot more premium than that other one, but, you know, it doesn't definitely doesn't bother me. This also has what they call their soft fine nib, which is a really nice, nice nib. We can do some size comparisons, and we can do some measurements. In terms of size, I'll put it here against a Lummi Vista. I would say one of, one of its biggest competitors would be the Lummi 2000. They're roughly the same length. So you can just see it is a full-sized pen for sure. 
and I'll put those guys away. Now let's go and do the measurements. So in terms of length, we're about 139, I would say 140 millimeters long. And then unposted, we're at about 120 millimeters. And posted, this posts very nicely and securely. We're looking at, eh, I would say that's about 155. This is a super comfortable pen. Now, in terms of the grip section, and we'll go right to that ring right before the end. We are 10.7, and then this will be the narrowest part right before 10. So a very minimal taper there. And then you do have this bump here that kind of prevents you from touching the nib where you could get ink on your hands. I really like this nib and grip section is very comfortable. Just to compare this to one of my other favorites, Aurora, this one is specifically a, a Talentum. You can just see, you get the same size nib, you get a similar sized grip section. The Aurora one is maybe a little bit bigger, but you know, this pen, the Aurora is more than twice the price. Now, is the finishing better on the Aurora? Yes. Do the Aurora pens write better? I would say they write differently. They do have maybe a slightly more premium feel, but the difference is like 5-10%. So that's just why I think this is a tremendous value. You're getting, you know, a super comfortable full-size pen for like $208. I really am a big fan of these. Now, let's do the weight. And this has a relatively full converter in here. I did just refill it. We're about 24.93, so a good weight and about 14.4 grams. This is certainly comfortable and long enough to use uncapped for me. You know, maybe if you have really big hands, you'll want to post it, but this is for sure a full-sized pen. So for the paper test, I'm going to be using, as always, a Papermine Mitsubishi Bank Paper. These are great for, for fountain pens and all types of pens, really. And for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. Snib. And this is a really nice ink that we just started carrying at the Paper Mind. This is Dominant Industry Romanian Red. And I really like the way that it kind of changes colors a bit when it dries. It's a really nice dark red. Fast writing. Yeah, overall, really nice performance. I really enjoy writing with this pen. You know, there isn't much in terms of line variation, even though the, the tip definitely has, you know, not a perfect ball shape. There's kind of a, a, a point. Um, to it, but it doesn't really translate into uh, the way that the lines look. But it's really nice to write with because it's so wet and juicy. This is just a, an awesome nib. Now in terms of flexibility, it is actually, you know, you do get some softness here, but you're not really seeing any difference in the, the line there. Reverse writing. Pretty nice, actually pretty smooth. Uh, so this is actually quite a, a good candidate for reverse writing. You know, you definitely get a noticeably smaller line when you do that. And I think because that tip is so big, it's actually quite smooth. So one of the better reverse writers out there. What are my pros and cons for the Platinum 3776 with coarse nib? Well, if you can't tell already, I really like the 3776 line. It's one of my favorite lines of Japanese pens just because of the variety of nibs and materials that this pen comes in. Now, in terms of the price, I think this is very fairly priced at $200 because you get a beautiful full-sized 14 karat gold nib. And compared to the other big three with Pilot, the Custom 74, you have a much smaller nib on a full-size body. And with the Sailor, the 1911 standard, you have a not full-size pen. So the whole pen is just smaller. So this is the best deal by far. And the quality is just as good as those other pens. There's no compromises here. And I think also the nib, you know, with the heart-shaped 
uh, breather hole in the Mount Fuji design. This is one of the prettiest of the big three nibs, so it's really excellent. Performance is amazing. I have no complaints about the performance of any of these 3776s that I've owned. They all write really, really well. The just quality control is top notch. Now, when we're talking about the coarse nib, this is a very smooth and wet double broad nib. It's really nice to write with, but also I think it's a great nib if you want to do nib customizations with the Nibmeister. I personally bought this because I'm going to turn it into a cursive italic nib. Uh, so I think if you're interested in doing that, the coarse nib is something definitely to consider and discuss with your Nibmeister, but I think it's probably the easiest to work with just because there's so much tipping material there. Now, the 3776, again, full-size body, very comfortable, not too heavy. I pretty much like everything about this. Now, if we talk about cons, I would say, well, you're stuck to their proprietary cartridge converter system. They do have the nicest converter, in my opinion, of the big three. You know, Pilot makes a bunch of them, and I honestly don't like any of them. The Sailor one is okay, but this one is prettier. And, you know, I even have hand-painted ones that came with uh, Nakaya pens that fit them. They're all interchangeable. This is also the same nib that you get on a Nakaya. Anyway, not to go back to the pros, but, you know, there's really not a lot to dislike here. I guess one thing I would say about the cartridges is that they have a metal ball at the end of them, and so when you, you know, put them into the pen, the metal ball is released, and that kind of breaks up air bubbles in the ink so that you get a more consistent flow, which is great, but I don't really notice that benefit exactly in practice and it makes the pen a little bit noisy because you can hear, hear that metal ball moving around in the cartridge. I would say that's probably the biggest drawback. If you like cartridges, the platinum ones are maybe a little bit noisy. Okay, but that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below and if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much and until next time.